All right, guys, so this is going to be kind of a meat and potatoes type of video where we're going to break it down for you what the ACSS reticle is all about and how to use the reticle and why it's such relatively an ingenious design. It is. And uh, so Mike mm -hmm. has more experience probably than anybody outside of primary arms with this reticle. That's probably true. <laughs> and, uh, and so I'm going to let him explain it because I'm learning from him, actually, because I misuse things. When I get new toys, yep. I, I'm, I'm the guy that takes the toy out of the box, disregards the manual, goes and plays with the new toy until I break it, then I refer to the manual as uh, to why and it. how I broke it, and then it's kind of that never-ending cycle. So I've had an ACSS reticle for quite some time, yep. just kind of stumbling my way through it, having never properly read how it works. So we're going to yeah. remedy that with this video, and I'm knife-handing you, so yeah. I'll quit that. <laughs> so there, <laughs> Take it away, there, man. There's a lot that goes into it. So as you can see, we have very high-tech tools here to explain it, but you know what? They're going to work just fine. Uh, so up front, on, t on the top and the center part of the reticle, we'll work that first and then sort of work on some of the other stuff. We have that donut of death there that many people are familiar with. What that donut's there for is to really draw your eye to it quickly uh, for CQB or really any engagements like 100 yards and in, just to put it on there and uh, go forth and press that trigger. Can I uh, add something there? Yes. So the donut of death is an interesting term because that dates back to the 70s with the original AUG mm -hmm. reticle, which was nothing more than literally a donut. Right. And uh, that we, we jokingly called it the donut of death back in the day in the 80s and when we first got exposed to them. And people call the EOTech that as well. It's yeah. A similar concept. It's stuck around forever, but it, like you said, it draws your eye in naturally. You, naturally, your eyeball wants to center everything. Yep. Okay. Uh, agreed. And then here we have the Chevron on there. That is going to be your zero point at 100 yards. This particular ACSS reticle, and there are several for those that don't know, is in yards and it is designed to be zeroed at 100 yards with 556, 223, uh, your M193. M855. Uh, for those of you guys who want to use this with 308, generally speaking, most loads, if you actually check your manual, like Tim said he hasn't done, <laughs> if you check your manual, most 308 loads, if you actually zero an inch high at 100 yards, the BDC will be on all the way down. Um, so that is how it works. The Chevron tip, of course, is good because it gives you a nice precise aiming point. That's nice. Also, additionally, the width of the donut of death, if you will, that is a ranging feature as well. So if you were to put someone their shoulders squared up as they're looking at you uh, in there and their shoulders go all the way across, whether it be their hips, their shoulders, whatever, uh, they are approximately 100 yards away. So there's a ranging feature built into it as well. It's not just random in terms of the width of it. Uh, same is gonna be true as you go down the top of the center bar there. That's gonna give you a 300 yard hold point. And then all the way down, you'll see the four, the six, and the eight there off to the right. Those are 400, 600, 800 yards, so on. What's nice about this is that some BDC reticles out there don't have the in-between points. So you're kind of holding off and nothing land. Um, if there's somebody at 500 yards, this has those. And then, of course, you can approximate in between if you know, they're at 450 or something like that. The dots that you're looking at as you go down on the side, those are five mile an hour wind holds. And those are full value wind holds. So, Obviously, you don't always have a consistent five mile an hour wind hold, but it gives you at least a reference to hold on. And then if for whatever reason your wind call isn't five and you see it off to the side, you have a way to make a correction from a known point. So um, also you can double those for 10 mile an hour winds and sort of hold off in the distance. They're pretty darn close. Um, so that's essentially how the center piece works there. Um, and you can, I pointed it out earlier, but you can range someone both at the shoulders and the hips in this situation. So uh, if you have a partially exposed target, like a guy on a rooftop or whatever, you can use that. You don't need to have a full body frontal shot to do it. I should also note that a lot of BDC reticles out there, uh, even some adopted by the military, use 19 inches as the average uh, width. So the reason uh, the folks over at Primary Arms and Dimitri in particular who designed this reticle went with 18 inches is that if someone's super skinny or small for whatever reason, which is true around the world for many of you guys who have, have been there, um, a lot of times you're fighting guys who are real skinny and not so tall. So this is for an average person who's 5'10", but with the 18 inches what it does is it lets you see your impact. So it kind of errors on the side of being a touch under if that makes sense so the reason is if it's 19 and someone's skinnier you're going to shoot over them and you're not always going to see your point of impact if you miss with this you should shoot in front of them if you miss at all it's very close but if you miss at all you'll see your impact and can adjust up also just like the russians with their sort of the way they do their bdc's they intend yeah. they intend for someone to shoot in the pelvic area it's the same concept so miss low rather than high same exact concept the uh the pso4 power has the yes. same math in it okay uh, in that regard all right, uh, so moving on. 
up here on the top, we have these dots, and what these are for is quick engagements for folks who are running. Uh, so the military has done a lot of studying, we were talking about this earlier off camera, about how fast someone with a weapon typically moves. The average that they've come up with is 8.6 miles an hour, so that is your lead. So you see some guy cutting across an alley with an AK doing things that are about to be bad, that's where you're going to hold for a quick engagement to put rounds on target, and uh, they should go where they that you intend them to go rather. Um, all right, moving on here on the left. This is an auto ranging feature and it's the second one that we have so far. So of course we have the auto ranging here in the center. This one is to range someone standing. So again, it's based on someone who's 5'10", that's a military standard. And I think we have, we have another <laughs> uh, epic graphic. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so it's the wonders of Google. Exactly. So it's designed so that you put the person's feet here on the bottom of that black line as you see it in the reticle. And as they as you come up where their head is, the tip of their head, that is how far away they are. Again, this is an approximation. It's not going to give you like 0 0.01 mils. It's not intended to be a sniper optic. It's intended to be a DMR type of optic. Quick, fast, ballistic solutions. Um, so it the person lines up like this, they're at 600 yards away. You're gonna put your center crosshair at the six, just like that, engage. And in theory, if everything's zero and you're doing your part and there's no wind in this situation, um, you're going to hit your target. If you got a five mile an hour wind, you're just gonna bump that little silhouette over. So that's how that works. And I should also point out that in this version of the ACSS reticle, this is designed for standing only. Um, some other ones out there will have the ability to measure waist up and you can do that. All you're gonna do with this optic, to do that is just cut it in half. So just cut the person in half and then do your math from there. You'll get pretty close, you won't be exact, um, but you can have some idea a minute there. A minute a bad guy. Exactly. And here we see a gentleman running at 8.6 miles an hour <laughs> holding an AK-47. He is therefore a threat <laughs> and can be readily engaged. Just so you know, <laughs> for, for the YouTube sensors out there. Exactly. It's all purely hypothetical. So I ran <laughs> I ran through that pretty quick. Is there any uh, No, man, questions? I think you, you covered it because I had a cheat sheet and he nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. Yeah. So, uh, it's it's actually pretty fun to use, and of course we were out on the range using it today. Unfortunately, we don't have the option of going out to 800 yards today, uh, but I will play with it some more with the rifle. I put it on my MR556, mm -hmm. and we'll take it out to our 1,000-yard range, and we'll shoot at some man-sized steel targets, and we'll see what we get. And but um, it should be pretty interesting. I'll tell you that I, I have uh, shot this particular one out to 700 yards on my range, and I use M193 primarily, and it's spot on. I mean, it, it works really well and one thing that's really important that a lot of people who don't shoot beyond three or four hundred yards uh, often forget is how important those wind holds are because where i am it's windy all the time and the wind never stops so having that ability for something to reference is huge so you know like with an rco for those of you guys that are familiar with that really all you have for any sort of wind is just the outside line as a reference point and like i said that's only a five mile an hour wind so as you can see in real life the wind's pushing that bullet around more than what you had before. So, I mean, I really like it. I was not a fan of uh, ballistic drop reticles at all right. until I used an ACSS because a lot of them simply weren't on, the math was wrong. And uh, I just, I, I got frustrated with them, um, but. Me it, too. So. I, I walked away from them years ago. Me and too. I, all I want, and for years up until probably today, I, I would always say, look, just give me a mill reticle. Me give too. me something with mill marks, like give Same. me a horse H59 with a Christmas tree. Yep. And I have my precise wind holds. I've used those for prairie dogs and things like that. I mean, I can get very precise with that little Christmas tree on H59. Um, but for something like this, for defensive purposes, uh, this this is easier to use. Absolutely. A lot of the horse reticles are too complicated and too much. They're better suited for target shooting than self-defense. And when you have time. So, you know, a lot of guys out there who have uh, particularly military guys, but even competition shooters, they'll put dope cards and stuff like that on their stocks. That's very common, I've done it. I still have several like that. Um, but what this does is it puts the dope card in your reticle. So you never have to take your eyes off to look at your card because it's right there in front of you. And for speed, uh, I mean, it, it, the ACSS system, again, there's several different types, is, is the best BDCs I've used, I've used to. Yeah, as you can see actually on the cheat sheet here, uh, and I have one of the older ones with the dot on it, and what we're using today has the chevron. Mm -hmm. So it's gone through some, through some minor evolutionary changes, but um, they all pretty much work the same way they with do. slight variations. Mm -hmm. So the information that you've gotten in this video should be good, unless they make drastic changes to it. Probably I, tomorrow morning right. when I wake up, <laughs> new ACSS2, it's like, dang it. <laughs> 
So, well, man, I greatly appreciate you taking the time Absolutely. to uh, swing by. The Him and his wife were traveling, and uh, they just happened to be in our area and um, got and a text the, message. <laughs> the dogs have, are here as well. So. Yeah, you've probably seen the pooches running around. Mm -hmm. And so uh, he said, hey, mine, you want, if I swing by? And I'm like, yeah, come on, <laughs> let's do some videos. So uh, w this is one of the things that I've been meaning to do for quite some time. But uh, again, um, Mike has a lot more experience with the ACSS reticle. So I thought it'd be a great opportunity to kind of pick his brain a little bit. So folks, if you're not familiar with Mr. Guns and Gear, uh, how may people find you on the internet? Sure. So on YouTube, it's uh, YouTube slash user slash Mr. Guns and Gear. And then Facebook, Instagram, it's just those slash Mr. Guns and Gear. And it's Mr. Guns in with an N like November, not and, gear. All right, and guys, we greatly appreciate the support. And if you'd like to directly support us here at the Military Arms Channel, the best way to do that is to become a Patreon supporter. We have a link down below. Also, swing by and check us out at coppercustom.com. And last but not least, we are Twitch gamers. If you guys like to play games and you want to do some live streaming, become a Patreon supporter. Send us your PSN network name. We'll add you as a friend, and you can join us in some live streams. Thanks for 11 years of support, and we'll talk to you guys soon.